Welcome to After Hours. My name is Richter. I am your host. Richter! What? Leave him alone! This shit is real. Now we got Richter go and we're gonna have to hear it about it all night. Yeah. <laughs> that's a bunch of screaming memes out there, and that's the scoop that has been reported so far. Thanks for dropping me like a snot. I'm not interested in believing in something. Either it's real or it's not. By your opinion that you are no kill, you are dooming the species to be extinct. They are what they are. It doesn't matter what we call them. Let's remove ourselves from them a little bit. And I think that's something that the Bigfoot community can actually learn a little bit from. I actually am trying to push the envelope of science here. When are we going to make a video, Richter? And I mean not an X-rated one. Dr. Todd, you've also been called the scoffdick. <laughs> yeah, well, have these creatures stood against a backdrop of trees, I probably never would have seen them. You can't talk about that. I can. So you guys are going to bag a Bigfoot and get us a body. We're giving it uh, our best efforts. We thought that we had the holy grail of DNA. Our hero, Bob Gimlin's with us. Hello, is this thing on? Am I muted? Can you hear me? Hey, Richter, I've got a question for you. How does it feel to lose Bigfoot Bounty? Hmm. My question is, why do you think Bigfoot is real? Richter does put a lot of effort <laughs> into his costuming, doesn't he? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, by effort, if you mean bending over and picking up whatever's on the floor. My. Well, in my opinion, After Hours with Richter is the number one Bigfoot webcast. Uh, what's your name again? Oh. Don't piss Richter off. <laughs> Richter, behave. Hi, welcome to After Hours. My name is Richter. I am your host. Joining me is my beautiful, sweet, sassy, glassy... Dot com. <laughs> and today we're going to be uh, talking to a Canadian doctor, a biologist who's been researching and studying Sasquatch for the past 40 years. Now, you've all heard of Dr. John Bindernagel. Well, today, we're going to talk to him in detail about his two books, where he hopes and thinks that Bigfoot research is going to go in the future, and Tammy is going to begin with her question. Doctor, yeah. why do you think Bigfoot is real? Well, for many reasons, many reasons, but the main one for me is, is the tracks, that I, which I talk about as physical evidence. You know, it's a track-leaving mammal, I think, it, which should be very helpful to wildlife biologists such as myself and my colleagues. Unfortunately, it turns out, as you know, not to be so helpful because of hoaxes and alleged hoaxes, and it's become problematic. So you think that tracks are a valid way to prove the existence of a species? Um, gee, I don't know if I would go that far. You know, I, I, I'm actually quite modest in my own goals. I am simply trying to attract the attention of other of relevant scientists to the evidence that we have. And I think tracks for wildlife biologists and zoologists and mammalogists, it should be, it, it should be compelling enough for them to at least scratch their head and say, gee, I think we should look into this a little further. You know, especially when we see how poor some of the hoaxes are, which are for some reason been accepted, we, we can talk about that. <laughs> well, they've been accepted because my colleagues uh, are, uh, find this a very unwelcome uh, discovery claim. We are claiming, as you know, that there is a seven foot tall, 800 pound large mammal, upright large mammal primate here in North America. That's an enormous claim. And sometimes we're not careful and it gets treated a little too Cavalierly, if you know if, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> well, this, well, let's add a little spice to that. Uh, Cliff Barrickman's doing research and studying the Orang Pendek, and those tracks are amazing. They certainly are. They you certainly know? are. So that's not evidence, nonetheless. It's still a part of the puzzle. Oh, it is evidence, but is but is it proof? I think. Okay. I think that's what okay. we're... Okay, it's evidence that there's a creature making those different kinds of prints. There's evidence that something right. is... And, 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 you know, it's interesting because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm planning to join that approach. I've been invited to, and I really want to. I, I like working in, in those parts of the world. I like the mm -hmm. birding and stuff that goes there. But uh, <clears throat> I, I was a little... Uh, Cliff gave me uh, copies of many of those mm -hmm. cats. And I, it was... Uh, he said, that, that should encourage... It was encouraging, but at the same time, I thought, oh, shucks. 
Chris and Dally, they, they've solved it. They've got, you know, 15 or so. This was last year already. They had 15 or so. What's left for me? And so, you no, know, there's lots left to do. Of course. Yeah. But, but, but you know, it, yeah, a huge advance, though. Mm -hmm. When you made the decision to move from uh, Central Canada to British Columbia, was it to better the study of Sasquatch? Yes, it was for me, yes. Because in those days, we didn't know about reports in Eastern North America, Central North America, the American Midwest, and all that Ohio stuff was not known to me. And, and from Ontario, where I grew up and, and worked, well, I had been working in Africa before that, but anyway, I, from, from Central Canada, I thought, well, BC, that's, that's the place. But you know, the problem, you know, you get out to BC and they say, oh yes, that is indeed a BC legend. You know, and, and so then this still applies, you know, this, this idea mm -hmm. that this is a BC legend. No, this is a BC large mammal. Well, I, I believe, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm convinced that mm -hmm. it is. It's not a matter of belief so much. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so yeah, we did, I did that. But of course, there's other great wildlife in British Columbia. The whole coast area is really pretty rich in wildlife. So for me, it was not a difficult decision. But definitely the Sasquatch was the big hook. Okay, so your wife, uh, Joan, mm -hmm. was she cool with all this? I mean... Cool, uprooting your cool, whole family cool. and moving to a whole different, you know, province uh, and... I'd, I'd say yes, yeah, yeah. yes, most of the time, yeah. you know, it, 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 it's better now because we're, we're sort of over the hump financially, but for a while there it was, you know, wasn't quite grocery money going out the door every week, right. but it was money that could have been spent on the house, maybe on some furniture, maybe a carpet or new mm -hmm. carpets, you know, that sort of thing, but anyway, it, it's okay now. And, and she sees, you know, I mean, she's, I mean, she was with me when we got our great uh, oh, yeah? track cast. Yeah, so, that, so she that knows was, firsthand that, now. That was good. That was good. Eye-opening eye, eye for her? Yeah, I mean, she didn't have, never had a problem. It wasn't a burning question for her okay. like it was for me. Uh, but she said, oh, well, yeah, she had some nice tracks, you know, we cast they, them, and right. there they were. And we've been trotting them around ever since, and, and uh, yeah. The past 40 years, we've gone from film to digital. Yes. We now have technology like FLIR, thermal, we have um, night vision, you know, is that going to help in finding Bigfoot or do you think these creatures are smarter than that and it's just our arrogance thinking that we're going to be able to get them with drones and things of that nature. I think it is helping and this is what, what, what troubles me more and more. This uh, discovery is unfolding more or less as we speak. There are these YouTube clips up there and some of them are very, very good. They're very, right. maybe brief, but you know, we will, we will, we will, there will be this day when we look back. Okay, like the Harley Hoffman footage. It's a black creature and it turns real quickly and it's gone. Then there's the, uh, the, Paul, the Freeman footage. Yeah. You know, where he goes, there he goes, and it's like this big lumbering, you know, stocky thing. And then there's that Memorial Day footage that Moneymaker and, and Meldrum did yeah. for Legend Meets Science. I'm actually thinking of others that I see that no one seems to be talking about. What are they? What and I don't know the names. You see, well, I, describe them, and we could, I could always throw them in there. Yeah, well, I don't know. It's just, it's just a, you know, a, a bipedal upright mammal, which which we have to be careful, could be human, you know. Of course. And you know, it just disappearing. And, and, but but usually, I mean, it's so important to know the backstory. Of the person, like, why is that person filming it? Why doesn't he think that's just a human? Maybe because he's you know, 15 miles mm -hmm. up, up some river mm -hmm. uh, in, in the mountains, and he, he knows that he essentially knows there's no one else there. But yeah, anyway, that th this is problematic, and that's why I don't dwell on, on on the on the sightings and the images so much, except that I really do. I have a nice collection of eyewitness drawings, and people keep drawing. This is what, I, to the best of my memory and knowledge, this is what I saw. And we have these recurring physical characteristics. You know, well, certainly the broad shoulders, but that short, thick neck. Mm -hmm. You know, deep set eyes, very the flat nose, flat, very yeah, often flat, outward yeah. facing nostrils, thin lips, mm -hmm. wide mouth often a conical head, these things keep coming up, and, and it does add up to something. And this was, getting to, talking about the book, this is my first book there, I called it North America's Great Ape, the Sasquatch, and I was firmly convinced that this is an upright great ape. Well, mm -hmm. I more or less still am, but I find if we talk about it too much as an ape, and whereas other investigators think of it as human, it becomes a divisive issue, and I, mm -hmm. I, I don't really want to promote that. So I say, well, let's just say primate, the larger group, which includes humans and primates. But yeah, I mean, there, there's my subtitle, of <coughs> Biologist Looks at the Continents, Most Misunderstood Large Mammal. That, that really, still, still, that's all I think it is, a misunderstood large mammal. 
Um, and, and I read, this is 1998, we're going back a few years right. here, and what I thought, well, what I did was describe the anatomy, behavior, and, the, and some of the ecology of the Sasquatch. And I thought, gee, this should be really helpful. We're pulling all this stuff together, right. we can now make sense uh, of a lot of the evidence. No, not, not my colleague. The book was ignored. And that, okay, that's not cool. No. That's not cool at all. No. No. Oh, oh, the, 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 the fact that they ignored it. Did I it. say that? Or no, no. It's, it's not, it is not cool that no. your colleagues ignored this amount of work that you put no. into something that's leaving tracks across the entire Pacific Northwest. Well, no, no. But you're right. It's not cool. And unfortunately, it's also not cool that I say that because, because I, I, I am one of them. And, right. And but I, it's also got to be frustrating. Oh, it's incredibly frustrating. Anyway, that's what led to the second book, if I, if I may just talk about that. Tammy, what's the second book? Okay. The Discovery of Sasquatch. The Discovery of the Sasquatch. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, the subtitle, which is unfortunately a bit long, Reconciling Culture, History, and Science in the Discovery Process. My point being, this is not... Uh, these, these aspects, the way the Sasquatch is, is perceived in culture, either uh, Aboriginal culture or mm -hmm. popular culture, it doesn't dismiss it from being a subject of science. Go ahead and hold it up. There you go. Yeah, this, I mean, if I may say so, it, and it's been acknowledged, a scholarly treatment. I mean, I mm -hmm. wanted it, I'd spent seven years, I wanted it to be very scholarly. I don't know mm -hmm. how many hundreds of footnotes are in there, but, you know, I mean, it, it, it really, it really tried, you know, we looked at bonobos and chimpanzees and uh, other great apes and, and, and certainly at humans and, and looked at the, the anatomy and the behavior. <clears throat> but, but the point there was that <clears throat> why this was ignored, I realized, oh, and the whole business of the upright bear. Uh, and see, this is where my biologist colleagues are still being saying, this is simply a misidentified upright bear. And you, you say that to someone who has seen a Sasquatch, mm -hmm. they get pretty upset. I mean, don't you think I would know a bear with its prominent snout and uh, right on with, right. Its, with its tapered shoulders? And, I and also, as p humans, we are programmed to recognize a bear. Yeah. Because we are below them in the food chain. And see, a bear is expectable. And that's why there is, a, there is one thing I did in, in both books, if I can find it, which I really like to show, because I think it's quite important. And uh, you take your time. Good. And I edit this and oh, I make it really tight. Okay, okay. So if you say a bad uh, word, I always bleep it out. Good. Um, I don't think I'll do that. <laughs> good. <laughs> Tammy's behaving. She's not saying bad words. Not yet. She has a, she has a, she has a, oh, here we go. Okay, ready? Go. Yeah. So I did this in both books because I think it's important. <clears throat> uh, nowadays, of course, if, if you or I saw a Sasquatch, we'd go, you'd go home and Google mm -hmm. it or something. But in, in, well, not so long ago, we'd go home and look in a, in a field guide to the mammals or, or go to the library and look it up. And we'd, we, what we would see is the closest thing would be an upright bear. And you say, sorry, uh, I see that that's the closest thing, but that wasn't it. Here's the, the image, which is not in the book, uh, the Sasquatch, kind of a generic side view, front view, field guide type drawing, you know. If that were in the book, you know, our, our general, our field guides and our mammal list, we'd say, there, that's it, that's it, that's what I saw. Yeah, flat face, didn't have the prominent snout, had, had shoulders, you know, mm -hmm. long arms, long and arms. And the bulk, yeah. <laughs> they call bulky. The size. Yeah, well that mm -hmm. too, I mean the whole, the mass. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are small ones, and it gets a little more difficult. You know, you get the, the what, the teenage, the sub-adult, young adult mm -hmm. Sasquatches. But, in general, they tend to be the ones seen or often described as large. Anyway, so, so I mean, so there is this psychological problem in that, you know, this is not an option. It, we're not allowed to have it as an option because, you know, the, well, I don't want to listen, but, you know, the authoritative books, the mm -hmm. field guides, which is changing very slowly. It's being mentioned now. No, do you believe, okay, uh, to go along with that, um, some doctors, Dr. Melba Ketchum, believes that Sasquatch bypasses the natural tree of life. It creates its own uh, sprout away from what has been scientifically accepted. Yeah. And my position on that, if you want to play hardball with the big boys, you got to learn the rules of the game <laughs> and beat them at their own rules of the game. So that's the problem. That's yeah. what I think. You yeah. can't be like this science radical, yeah. Bigfoot poofed out of thin air, bam. You know, you can't do that. No. You have to no. learn the rules. Of the, right? Am I, am I wrong? I'm not a, no, okay, no. I'm not a scientist, but no, I think no. that's just the way you do well, things. Well, th there, is, there is this unfortunate situation, which I keep coming back to. A scientific, well, uh, excusing, you know, uh, Melba Ketcher here, mostly it's being done by investigators 
who are doing it on their weekend with on on their own dime, so to mm -hmm. speak. You know, if we had our, our scientific colleagues more involved saying, gee, I would advise you to do this, I would suggest this, here's some methodology, that's not happening. And 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 and, and Melba, you know, I mean great for what she's done, but, but could have used some advice from her colleagues on, on how to proceed, because she's done some good work and, and maybe not always uh, presented it in no best manner. Well, it's like with, when it comes to Bigfoot, there's always that ounce of truth and a gallon of bullshit, and there's a lot of that. With everything, there's that ounce of truth that always keeps me going. Well, well that's an interesting comment, because that, that, that's the way it is to me with myths, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. people write, oh, it's just, it's just an, an Aboriginal myth, early American myth. Well, yes, it is a mythical creature because it occurs in myth, but then so do wolves and otters and orcas, you know. And so we take this, we, we non-native often take a very narrow interpretation of myth, and, and we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Because, there, as you said, there's that, that, that germ of truth, that kernel of truth in there on which myth is based. Sure, there's exaggeration in that sort of stuff, but we, anthropologists know that. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we have to expect that. We're, we're looking for that kernel of truth, the basis. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Back in 1967, when the Patterson-Gimlin film was released, what do you think that the impact was on the scientific community back then and now? Yeah, I'm not the best one to speak on the film. I'm, a, you know, I'm a really good friend of, of Bob Gimlin's. You know, but I got in trouble because I, I included a, a I, I accepted it myself. You know, I, and I really didn't probably notice what what was going on in the larger scientific community. But I put a, put a put a. A still from that in here, and then uh, I was going to use it in the second book, and, and someone was going kind to of give me uh, editorial advice said, John, that will poison your book. I mean, it has become so commonly perceived as a hoax. They said, if you if you put that in your book and and you know uh, go on as if you accept it, you, dead. Yeah. You know, yeah, dead in the water. Yeah, and I thought, oh, gee whiz. So I I didn't. I I I, taught, I mentioned what other people said about it, but because it, it has been treated as the centerpiece. Mm -hmm. And I understand that because it's out there, so to speak. The plaster cast, who wants to spend their time pouring over Jeff Meldon's cast and his lab one and, and do her, or the, the ones I have, you know. I think the cats are, should be the, for me, they're the centerpiece of evidence, but that's not the general perception. Mm -hmm. so, so it's always back to he says, she says. Yeah. Well, let like me that. ask you this. Do you think that if the truth behind the Patterson-Gimlin film was ever revealed to truly be a hoax, I mean, the details, the, the total truth came out, would it ruin the legend of Bigfoot? Would, would Bigfoot the, be over? Would that be it? Well, you, that's certainly a perception, and that's why, you know, every time that film is debunked, they, they, you know, and, and that, that's the problem of treating that as a centerpiece. If they can debunk the film, they've debunked the, sorry, mm -hmm. the, 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 the existence of the Sasquatch or Bigfoot. No, 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 not at all. And that's, <clears throat> that's what I got into here. I'm more of a, someone called it a more holistic approach, and I thought, yeah, that, that's what it is, you know. I mean, the historical accounts, starting with monsters and then wild men back in the 1800s. People were seeing Sasquatches, describing them, and these accounts were being published in the newspapers. But th those accounts just languished. People didn't know what to do with them, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I would do lots of eyewitness descriptions, you know, and, and, then, and then the track cast. You know, now we've moved on to, you know, record, like here at this conference, you know, um, vocalizations being recorded, ha hair being analyzed for DNA. So, so, no, for me the film, again, with due respect to my good friend Bob, you know, right. I mean, and mm -hmm. he, he suffered, you know, just from, from bringing it yes. forward, but, mm -hmm. but, but uh, I think it's great. And, and I think a lot of this evidence, it's good to see here, we'll go back to that. You know, when we get our type specimen or whatever, it, probably that's what it's going to take for final acknowledgement of the discovery. And, you know, and, and that's what I, that's what I, that's why I'm kind of excited about that second book, because I mean, people, and, and I got into this, when there is that final acceptance. <clears throat> <laughs> Available um, on Amazon.com. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and a lot of work going into it, but anyway, uh, when there is that final acceptance, then there will be people asking scientists, "Didn't you see this coming? You know, where was this? Where was the dialogue leading up to this discovery?" And so that you talk about being frustrated, mm -hmm. trying to create that dialogue, trying to get papers presented at conferences has been very, very yeah, you difficult. brought up an interesting point. You know, you said that uh, Bob Gimlin has suffered, but because of you know, his uh, affiliation with the Patterson-Gimlin film and being involved. Why would people that have an experience and see a creature that, you know, has not being recognized, undiscovered, 
why would they want to come forth if they're going to suffer? It's pretty obvious that everybody's had some kind of bad experience interacting with other people because of sharing their experience. So, and you've experienced that in the scientific community. So, if people know they're going to be suffering ahead of time before they come out, yeah, right, 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 put it out there. Why put it out there? Yeah. Because they really feel strongly about what they saw. Yeah. Would you agree that's oh, the case? Completely. And I see it even more in Canada because I think we're a little more conservative. It's even harder to come forward. And people are unaware of uh, events like this where we do get together and network and share, share mm -hmm. reports and that. Yeah. And see, I'm coming back increasingly <clears throat> as I get older and older uh, and time is running out. Uh, my colleagues, you, you know, who I keep, I, I'm ready to say they, they've dropped the ball and and, and you, or did you say that uh, that's something you shouldn't say? You know, no, I, I shouldn't say that. But uh, but but I'm ti getting tired of excusing them for mm. ignoring all this evidence, which which people are trying to bring to their attention. But you know what? If a body were to be found or come forth, they would be the first ones to jump on it because they'll put them on TV. Mm -hmm. And 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 look at it, and grants will become available, mm -hmm. and they'll be able to say, well, I often I actually wondered about this. I actually. No, well, you still I, I'm, have, very, you, I'm very, very cynical. You now. still have a good 50 years ahead of you. Yeah, so you're in great shape. <laughs> Another decade would be nice, but anyway, no, no. We'll, we'll, so we'll see. It could, anything can happen. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen 25 years from now. Well, that's what's encouraging when, 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 when in a group like this, you hear all these accounts and what mm -hmm. people are, what, you know, amateurs, acknowledged mm -hmm. amateur investor in the best sense of the world, right. uh, word. They, they love the, the, the research and they, they, as I say, it's on their own dime. And very, some are very disciplined, very dedicated. Mm -hmm. Many are very disciplined. Well, look at dedicated. Bob and Kathy Strain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, if it's going to happen, it's going to be by them. Diligence, uh, patience, yes. professionalism, and, discipline, hard work. I think it's happening in a number of places. And, that, that's, one, and, and, and that's what's also encouraging to me is, is the amount of effort being mm -hmm. uh, put forward. Yeah. Right. So it, what you're actually done with your books is that you're actually um, giving amateur Bigfooters an education on the subject because you can't go to school to st study Sasquatch. You can go to school to study anthropology or archaeology or to be a pr primatologist mm -hmm. but when it comes to Bigfoot and all the different stories, all the different uh, Native American myths, the names, yeah. the behavior patterns, the, the, the casts, dermal ridges, mid-tarsal break, things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. So, so you're, you've done a great service to the Bigfoot world. Well, it'd be nice if, uh, you know, I couldn't get this book reviewed. I haven't been able to get that book reviewed. It'd be nice if my colleagues were, were a little more aware of it. I mean, someone said that, that'll be a great textbook. Well, Come I mean, on, well, people. It, it, <laughs> read no, no. this book. The Discovery <laughs> of the Sasquatch. If, 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 but the subject is still scientifically taboo. And that, that's what I'm trying right. to help. But everyday new species are being identified. The, the bonobo, when was that discovered? That was what, the past what? You got me on that one. I mean, I know, I know the gorilla was like within 18, the last 18, 15 years. I mean, yeah, you know, and so it's going to happen. And when it happens, the, the scientific community will have these books to draw upon. And then you'll be pressed to write another book. Yes, well, no, it, it'll be too late, but anyway. <laughs> no, never too late. <laughs> But you, no, you keep going. But, but, wait, 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 wait. You keep going until you get to the finish line. Yeah, yeah. It, right? One does. One does. Right. That's right. That's right. I mean, sure, there's a lot of other stuff to do, but this is... I mean, gee, being involved so, in, in, in such an important unfolding zoological discovery, why wouldn't a scientist want to be right. involved in that, is, is my take. Um, so the future of Bigfooting, the young up-and-coming, like Nathan, who's 22 years old with the Olympic Project, these are the kind of books that they need to be reading. Absolutely. Yes. Right. Don't be yes. humble. I'm sure. Don't be humble. I mean, it's the truth, mm -hmm. right? It's just, I think so. Yeah. This is this is because this, is, this one gives a perspective, and the perspective in that book is that it's been discovered. Right. You this know. is Bigfooting 101, people. But 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 that discovery has not yet been acknowledged. Todd Standing says these species must be protected. They're endangered. Well, how do you know that? How do you know yeah. they need to be? They've been doing just fine all this time you know and they're in an element where we're not we're not out in the deep dark forests of british columbia do you think they need to be protected or you think they're doing okay on their own uh hey my little squatch monsters it's time to shake up the bigfoot community this is off the richter i hate to bring it up but there does seem to be a connection to ufo bigfoot's invisible yet they're invisible did he just say bigfoot's invisible Yet they're invisible. 
No one's gonna take you seriously. We know for a fact that squirrels can't cloak. Oh God, here we go. Make sure your chairs are raised and tray tables locked in the upright position. If Roger Patterson were alive, he would be kicking your ass. Put down the bong and prove me wrong. God, why am I always having to tell this to you Bigfooters? You want your Bigfoot video to be seen? Now's your chance. How can you look for Bigfoot with all this marijuana smoke? Hey, I'm Richter. I'm Bigfoot OG.